What's going on YouTube? It's TH back again with another video and today we're ranking all 32 NFL defenses and hopefully you will enjoy today's video. If you do, be sure to hit that like button. It really would help me out a ton. If you're new around here, we're getting really, really close to 1,000 subscribers. Me, the world to me if you hit that big red subscribe button and give me your takes. Let me hear your ranking of the NFL defense. Maybe who fits in that elite tier? Do you value pass rush or secondary play more? Love to have your thoughts on this is very subjective. So let's talk about each and every defense across the NFL down below in the comments section. If you missed my offense video, definitely go back and check that one out. But let's waste no more time, jump right into it. And I feel like I'm going to upset some people with this one, but I'm going to have the Arizona Cardinals in the below average tier. Um, just for reference, I am taking into account, you know, coordinators and, you know, their, you know, past successes. And Vance Joseph is the biggest strength in my eyes for this Arizona defense and maybe why they should be ranked higher. Because I was completely skeptical of this unit last year, and that was with, you know, Chandler Jones. So... You, you, I just look at that secondary, you know, Byron Murphy's great, but he's a nickel corner. Buda Baker's a stud, but he's a safety. And then the rest of the unit, you're going to need Marco Wilson to exceed expectations. And I'm just not entirely sure it can happen two years in a row. Uh, this also could be a unit that improves based off Isaiah Simmons, you know, and hopefully then moving him around and finding his true position is Avon Collins, you know. I was kind of starting to think, you know, leading up to that 2021 draft that, oh, he's gaining weight. Maybe they... Maybe an NFL team is expecting him to play the edge. And, you know, he had some good tape coming from Tulsa as a pass rusher. And this might be a year where maybe they, we see Arizona take advantage of that, considering Chandler Jones is gone. They're pretty weak on the edge. So, Zayvon Collins, he'll be an interesting chess piece. And, then, you know, J.J. Watt's great and all, but I, I hate to say this, but we know he's going to get hurt. Like, I, I hope I'm proven wrong when I say that. But more more likely than not, J.J. Watt will miss some, some significant time this year. So, He's still good, not the same J.J. Watt he once was, but he's still a productive player, but I just don't know how much of the season he's out of playing. So I don't love the talent. I do like Vance Joseph, though, and he has proven me wrong before. So next up, the Atlanta Falcons, and I'm going to have them right behind the Arizona Cardinals. A couple of tough defenses to start. Um, and, you know, actually on second thought, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move them down to the bad tier. This, this, is, a, this is a tough team because the, the top-tier talent in that defense, A.J. Terrell, one of the best corners in football, Grady Jarrett is a legitimate force on the interior um you know i like the idea of signing casey hayward to be that number two corner though i'm interested to see how that fits with dean pease and you know i liked richie grant 40th overall pick in the 2021 draft but didn't get a whole lot of playing time last year and that's a little worrisome uh you know Deion jones is a really good player but he's a likely you know trader or cut candidate so with this video i i am anticipating on all these big names still being there but Deion Jones, you know, more than a Roquan Smith feels likely to be gone by the time we get to the regular season. So I don't know. I'm still accounting for him being there. And I like Troy Anderson. But outside of those star level players, it's question marks on the edge. You're going to need some young players to step up. You're going to need Troy Anderson to step into a role that was filled by Foyese Aluakun. And he did a pretty good job in that spot. Um, you're going to need other help on the defensive line besides Grady Jarrett. You're going to need Casey Hayward to fit in that Dean Pease defense. And that's the other component here is like, I was interested to see what Dean Pease would do look like as a DC in Atlanta, what that scheme all kind of comes together and forms as, but it was still, you know, not a very good defense last year. So no reason to believe that, you know, all of a sudden it's all going to come together. Uh, I think they're just missing some talent, pretty significant talent. So right now in the bad tier and at the end of the video, we might change that, move them up to below average. Next up, the Baltimore Ravens. So this is a team and a defense I'm pretty high on. So we'll kind of work back to front. Um, uh, Love the secondary. You know, Marcus Peters is healthy. Uh, Marlon Humphrey, healthy. Um, and then you talk about the safeties. You know, you draft a Kyle Hamilton. Uh, you still have a Chuck Clark. And you sign a Marcus Williams. Then, you know, Williams is a deep safety. Kyle Hamilton rotating the box. That feels like a really nice complement of their skills. But even if you're running, you know, two high looks and some cover two, those guys can play split safety uh, next to each other. So, I love that secondary. Some question marks at linebacker, but I also think Wink Martindale asks a lot out of linebackers. So maybe a change in scheme going from Wink Martindale to Mike McDonald's, the defensive coordinator. Maybe that is is a benefit to Patrick Queen. Maybe he has a career year. And then, you know, getting onto the defensive line, this team always just finds a way to be, you know, competent, solid. Calais Campbell comes back. Brandon Williams is there. Uh, year two of Adafi Owe. You get a steal in draft value for David Ajabo. Tyus Bowser still somebody... Who can be, you know, a, a DPR depending on how quick, you know, Ojabo gets out there and how good he looks. But even if you have to start Bauer, you know, I don't, I don't think that's a bad thing. Uh, so I, I think this is a pretty complete defense. Um, 
and you know, it's just a huge identifying mark, and it has been for you know the Ravens and the way they've done it since they became the Baltimore Ravens in a lot of ways. So yeah, I'm, I'm big time on this defense, and I think it's an elite group. So then we get to the Buffalo Bills, and the Bills are also going to be in this elite category. They, they do it in a little bit of a different way, like where I talk about you know the Ravens. I'm like, oh man, Marlon Humphrey's a stud, and big fan of Marcus Williams, and I love Kyle Hamilton. But the Bills are a lot of ways solid, except for you know. Tredavious White, obviously a stud, uh, really good safety duo, and Micah Hyde, Jordan Poyer. They'll need Kyrie Elam to step in and be pretty uh, impactful right away. I'd love to see this team sign a Joe Hayden or, or, or some other veteran corner to be there as a, as a buffer potentially for Kyrie Elam and his struggles. Tremaine Edmonds is still only 24. He's, he's my age, so there's there's still plenty of time for him to be able to break out and, and like the athletic skills are there. He and Patrick Queen in a lot of ways are very similar. They look like an NFL linebacker and what you want right now. The production just hasn't followed suit. Uh, and Matt Milano is a really solid coverage player. Uh, but really, the defensive line is is why they're here, which is bonkers to say, considering how much they've invested there. But rave reports out of Ed Oliver, this training camp. Now, you know, training camp hype, you know, it depends on who you are and how much you buy into it. But when you hear it pretty across the board, it's, it's everyone is saying, and it's not just, oh, this beat reporter. Everyone's singing the praises of Ed Oliver. So hopefully this is his true breakout year. Even if it's not, they bring in a Tim Settle, like that signing. Thought they got him at a good value, and he could bring some pass rush. He's just been a guy who's buried behind, you know, Jonathan Allinger, on Payne, Matt Ioannidis, and Washington. This could be a true breakout change for him. But you know, you sign a Von Miller for a team that's been looking for edge, you know, help, and a guy who can turn pressures into sacks. Von Miller, future Hall of Famer. That's a great ad. But even just the work they've done in years past, AJ Epineza, Greg Rousseau, Boogie Basham, they have. Nice rotation pieces to go opposite of Von Miller and work with Von Miller as he's, you know, obviously on the wrong side of 30. So love that pass rush rotation. I think Ed Oliver is going to put it together. The linebackers, there's pieces and, and some talent to work with. Milano's already pretty proven. I think Edmonds will get better. And of course, the secondary is very solid. So two elite defenses back to back. And then we get to the Carolina Panthers. And this is another team where, in a lot of ways, the thing I like the most is their defensive creator, Phil Snow. But that being said, I'm also a huge Brian Burns guy. They're going to go in this mid-tier uh, because, you know, outside of Brian Burns, you need Derek Brown to figure it out. Like year three, he's got to have that, you know, step forward. If not him, you know, Matt Ioannidis is going to have to see the field more or Davion Nixon maybe, uh, you know, got hurt midway through last year. Maybe he's ready to be a guy who fills that Derek Brown role. Um, and it's your gross Matos is going to have to be somebody who's impactful on the other side opposite of Brian Burns. So some question marks there across the defensive line. I do like Shaq Thompson a ton at that linebacker spot, so I'm very confident in his ability. He's a very underrated player, in my opinion. And then getting the secondary, and big fan of Jeremy Chan. I like Xavier Woods. That feels a nice compliment. Very coverage-heavy guy with Woods versus a guy you'd love to have in the box with Chin. And then the cornerbacks, you know, you will you make the trade for Stephon Gilmore. He's now gone, but you still have Adonta Jackson, who I think is a solid player, good athlete more than just about anything else. But J.C. Horn before his injury last year, was looking like a star in the making and that ability to play man press is really alluring and then also if you can complement that with uh you know maybe cj henderson has a career year i mean you know tumultuous start to his career in jacksonville he gets traded then hurt last year with the carolina so this is this feels like the real first opportunity we get to see what phil snow can get out of him so man if you add his athletic ability and man co man press coverage skill with jc horn having that same type of ability then you move Dante Jackson, who's a really good athlete and has good speed. You put him in a slot. That's a really nice trio of corners to work with, plus with two safeties I like. So this this is definitely a unit that could move up. Uh, and again, I'm a big Phil Snow guy. And Brian Burns is always a sneaky defensive player of the year candidate, in my opinion. So like a lot of what's here, but there there is a lot of holes and question marks that need to be answered. And then we get to Chicago Bears. And, you know, look, I'm, I'm not trying to be you know too mean to Chicago fans this, this offseason, but... Then after you trade Khalil Mack, what is that pass rush? You know, you also lost to Keem Hicks. So it's right now Robert Quinn, but even he's a guy who's potentially on the move. And and then a whole lot of, you know, we'll see uh, when it comes to the pass rush department. Roquan Smith, a, you know, a stub, but he's requested a trade. You know, he's 25 years old. So, you know, depending on what the value would be, if it's a second or a third, I, I'd almost just try to pay him. But, you know, even that's tricky because it's an off-ball linebacker, position value, you get yourself into, you know, cap troubles when you pay, you know, unnecessary positions or lower value, position value. Um, those groups like off-ball linebacker, safety, you know, center, stuff like that. So it, it, it feels like a lose-lose situation in a lot of ways for the Bears. So that's tough, but I do like that secondary. Now, granted, you're relying on two rookies to be able to come in and, and be impactful in Jaquan Brisker and, and Kyler Gordon, but man, I, I like those two guys and I like them and their compliments, right? With with Brisker, it's playing next to Eddie Jackson. 
All right, I like that. And now head coach, uh, you know, Matt Eberflus, who had a ton of success with Kari Willis and, and Julian Blackman in Indianapolis, and Alan Williams, DB's coach. Now he's the DC in uh, Chicago. So like that a lot. Uh, and then, you know, getting the cornerback position, it, it's it's Gordon working with an opposite of Jalen Johnson, who was a really nice player his rookie year, then got hurt. And hopefully in year three, he gets back to where he was to start his career. And those two in that Eberflus defense, I think are a really nice pairing and a nice fit. So, uh, there's something to be hopeful about in that secondary, but we haven't seen it yet. So this could be another unit that you know shoots up. But for right now, I think I got to put them in the below average category. Uh, next up, the Cincinnati Bengals, and you know the Bengals kind of feel like the definition of solid to me. Like this is exactly what I would describe a solid defense as. There's no holes, right? Trey Hendrickson, you know, DJ Reader was really a big piece of that defense when he was healthy, stopping the run. Because there's not a whole lot of other guys on this roster you look at and you're like, that guy's just going to stop the run at a high level. So Reader's impactful. Uh, you know, PJ Hill had some big moments. And then, you know, opposite of Hendrickson, it's, you know, it's, it's Sam Hubbard, who's, you know, just kind of a fan favorite, and solid both against the run and okay as a pass rusher. But year two of Cam Sample, maybe he breaks out. Year two of Joseph Osai, maybe he breaks out. Linebacker room, Logan Wilson. I don't want to say broke onto the scene, but started to become a little bit of a household name last year. Huge step forward uh, coming out of Wyoming. And then you, you have some other pieces that are, you know, something to work with, like a Jermaine Pratt. Like, I don't think you should give up hope on that. Then you get to the secondary. You know, Eli Apple may not be great. He's got his haters, but he was solid last year. And then, you know, uh, on the other side, it's a career year for Chidobia Wuzie, assuming they find a way to appease, you know, Jesse Bates. One of the best free safeties in football. Von Bell's a very strong, uh, very solid, strong safety. And then you add in Cam Taylor Britt, wherever he may play safety or corner. And then Dax Hill, same thing. So solid across the board, depth to play with. This is textbook solid defense in my eyes. And then except the Cleveland Browns, I'm gonna actually have them as the top defense on here. And it does help. Of, of the teams that we've talked about, you know, Miles Garrett is uh, probably the best player uh, in, you know, depending on what you talk about, you know, top three to five defensive player in the league, point blank and simple. Um, so love that defensive line with Garrett being the headline star. But on the other side, Jadavion Clowney and even Chase Winovich is a DPR getting away from New England where those, you know, edge rushers have to do a whole lot, a lot of work on their plate. I feel like this is a nice change of scenery and allow him to just focus on getting the quarterback. Some questions on the interior, the defensive line, you know, is it Perry on Winfrey's job? You know, how does that shake out? They definitely kind of need a, 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 a true nose, a, a full-time run stopper. And maybe that's Tommy Togiai. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, but even if it gets to the second level, those linebackers, Anthony Walker coming off a solid year. Glad they brought him back. Jeremiah Wusa Koromo, if he's healthy, that dude can shoot gaps. Freaky athlete, but he can also be an impact player in coverage, be that overhang guy playing the slot. Big joke fan. And then, you know, the secondary in and of itself. Denzel Ward. That's cornerback one. That, that dude's a stud. Paid for a reason. Um, big fan of Greg Newsom. Liked Greedy Williams when he came out of the draft, and last year was kind of the first year we saw him stay mostly healthy and put it all together. Uh, you know, John Johnson the third, a little bit of a dip in his production compared to his last couple of years with the Rams, but still a guy who, at his best, one of the best safeties in football. Uh, and then... I was a huge Grant Delpit guy coming out of LSU. I'm not done with my hopes there. I think there's there's a good football player to, to to coach up and develop. And then also, you know, Ronnie Harrison Jr. I mean, really solid player. Had some good games for the Jags. And if he's your third safety, good flexibility. And, you know, him and Delpit feel like guys you could put in the box. And then John Johnson the third, who has the same ability. But if you make him the coverage guy, I think that's, that's a really nice way of working out that rotation. And the NFL more and more is becoming a three safety type of league. So big fan of the Browns. Solid across the board, except for maybe interior defensive line, but they also have some depth to play with, so that's always a huge plus in my book. The Dallas Cowboys, I'm gonna put them in solid. They'll probably be one of the bottom teams in this solid tier. This one's this one's tricky because you know Michael Parsons is a freak, uh, but Michael Parsons also, when it comes to how you utilize him, it feels so much better when you're making decisions not out of necessity, but by matchup or by choice, and he becomes like a queen on a chessboard where he can do everything. Um, but when you lose Rady Gregory, it feels like Micah Parsons is gonna have to be, I don't wanna say full-time edge rusher, but close to it, or at least a lot more uh, of an edge rusher than he was last year. But him and you know Tank Lawrence, opposite of one another, like that duo a ton. Uh, and this team's been looking for that interior defensive lineman. They're kind of similar with the Browns there. They haven't really found an answer, but you know, that's, you know, of the position groups that are going to be weak. IDL is not a bad one. Um, and then you get in the linebacking core. Of course, Parsons is a factor here, but if he is going to be used more as an edge, you know, can Jabril Cox step up? 
Leighton Van Der Esch, one year, $3 million deal. Go out there and earn some money next off season. Those guys are, are gonna be a big part of the mix uh, and gonna need to be stepped up, or are gonna need to step up and be better players. Uh, and then the secondary, you know, Trevon Diggs probably not gonna have 11 interceptions, but I also think he can get better as a coverage player. Um, Javon Curse was, or J. Ron Curse was a nice ad last year and a safety that does a ton of different stuff. Um, and, and all in all, I like that secondary. And, you know, Dan Quinn, of course, had a great defensive head coach had a, you know plenty of uh, head coaching opportunities at his disposable uh, this offseason, just decided to stay in Dallas. But uh, there's pieces to work with, but I do think it's a defense that regressed from where they were last year. And then next up, the Denver Broncos. And I'm going to keep going with the solid category here. Um, I, I like Bradley Chubb and I like Randy Gregory kind of continuing his uh, his arc here from Dallas to Denver. I think that's a really nice duo. Um, I'm pretty pretty big fan of Draymond Jones. I think he can get better this year. And you also have, uh, you know, DJ Jones there on the defensive line. They'll need some help and some improved play on the interior. Josie Jewell in specific would be the guy that would benefit the most from that. If, if that defensive line can keep him clean and let him focus on being, you know, impactful coverage player. He actually had like an elite coverage grade per pro football focus last year through just two games. So a very small sample size, but I think he brings that skill uh, to the table. And then you get in the secondary and, you know, Ronald Darby will need to prove that he can do it back to back years. But if he does, on top of year two, Patrick Sertan, assuming he gets better, that's a really clean duo. Uh, Kwan Williams also a solid nickel corner. And then, you know, Kareem Jackson's back. He's getting older, but him and Simmons have proven to be a really solid safety duo. So feel really good about that. It does suck that you lose Vic Fangio, but all the same, it's going to be a similar defense. It's going to be in that family tree. Uh, so I, I definitely think solid defense for sure. Lions, I'm going to put Detroit in mid, like the edge rotation they could put together with Hutchinson, the Aquaras, Josh Pascal's inside-out versatility. I'm also a big believer in Aline McNeil, Levi and Wuzurike. I think they can get better uh, this upcoming season. A little weak at linebacker Alec Anzalone and then, you know, Jared Davis, Jarrod Davis. They'll, they'll need somebody to step up and be better than I, I would set my expectations for if they want to move up and out of the mid-tier. Uh, in the secondary, obviously, you're going to need Jeff Okuda to... to play like a top three pick, right? But Mani Overwarrior coming off a six interception season, year two of Efetu Melo Fonwu coming out of Syracuse, who was raw, but has the skills, has the athleticism. Uh, also, Will Harris moving to corner. I just want to know what that looks like. Safety moving to corner, not one you see often. Uh, and then, you know, Deshaun uh, Elliott, a really sneaky ad and a solid ad for a team that needed safety help. And then Tracy Walker, who that's had some moments, had some flashes, will need to be more consistent this year, but I'm also a big Aaron Glenn guy and people who have watched Hard Knocks, that entire coach staff's awesome, but I'm a huge Aaron Glenn guy and actually, you know, shout out to Doug Kide. He, he said something I've been preaching for a while now. If this team's anywhere near 500, it's hard to imagine not seeing Aaron Glenn as a guy who's getting a ton of head coaching interviews and maybe becoming a head coach in a year's time. I've been saying that for you know, more than a year now. Big Aaron Glenn supporter, and you know I think he'll be able to work his magic with his defense. There's pieces, but it's still probably a year or so away from you know maybe moving into that top end of solid, and you know, maybe maybe to keep Glenn and add a lot of talent, maybe moving to that elite tier. The Green Bay Packers. This might be the best defense in football. I mean, it's it, it's in my opinion the best that uh, Aaron Rodgers has had during his his career so far, and I'm going to put him in that number one spot. Man, I mean, talent everywhere. Let's talk about that secondary. Uh, best secondary football, in my opinion. You're three corners deep with Jair Alexander being a top three guy at that position. Eric Stokes coming off a good rookie year. I think he's only going to get better in year two. Uh, and then also Rasul Douglas coming off a career year, playing the nickel, or as that you know third rotational boundary corner. Love that. Also, shout out to defensive coordinator Joe Barry. He was a big impact and a, and a big part of the team's success on the defensive side last year. Great safety duo with Darnell Savage and Adrian Amos. Like the linebackers, Devondre Campbell was the best linebacker in football last year. You add Quay Walker, who's very Campbell-like, a uh, little raw, but you know, if you put him next to anybody, you know, put him next to his clone, Devondre Campbell. That kind of makes sense. And then you get the defensive line, Devontae White, the first-round pick. Probably going to see him start over Jaron Reed. Dean Lowry, solid. Kenny Clark's one of the best uh, pass-rushing nose tackles. Rashawn Gary broke out superstar s type of player they'll need preston smith for the first time in his career to be uh you know an above average edge back-to-back -back years but it does help that he's the number two guy and rashawn gary will be the, the edge rusher that gets a lot of attention from offenses so not a lot of holes and some depth to play with as well and a great defensive coach yeah and they're also kind of aided by where they play right like lambo obviously not a great place and not very friendly to offenses december onward throughout the season so Green Bay, definitely elite defense, in my opinion. We get to the Houston Texans. And, you know, this is not to say that, like, I hate the Texans defense. Because, you know, I love that they want Derek Stingley. 
Jr. at, at pick number three. Um, and, you know, I've talked about a couple other edge rushers uh, and Okoronkwo coming from the Rams on a small sample size of playing time. And Jonathan Grenard, same thing, feels like a guy who could break out onto the scene. Malik Collins has had some moments. Uh, Christian Harris, good third round pick. I like that ad. It's just you're, you're saying, OK, well, maybe Okoronkwo will break out. Maybe with more playing time, Grenard will do that. Or, you know, maybe Christian Harris will be able to hit the ground running as a third round pick. Um, you know, maybe Derek Stingley Jr. is the full package and he'll become a, you know, shutdown corner on day one. Those all sound good, but there's no guarantee that they happen. And I'm kind of picking and choosing names here. The sum of the defense is still pretty rough. So I'm going to put them in the bad tier, but I think this is a team that expects to be kind of rough. And I mean, this is a team that's pretty deep into a rebuild. It really didn't get to start the rebuild until the Deshaun Watson trade. So they're playing a little behind the eight ball there. So this is not an indictment saying, you know, Levy Smith's a bomb and, you know, Nick Casario should be fired tomorrow or whatever. This is a team that has a bad roster. Ergo, they have a bad defense. The Indianapolis Colts, I'll put them in the solid tier. Uh, no Matt Eberflus, no Alan Williams. You switched to Gus Bradley, which, you know, Bradley's had a solid track record, put together a long career, but we know what defense he's going to be run. We've seen, you know, and he, it can be so predictable that in a span of, you know, two games in three weeks, this, the Chiefs put up two separate 40-point showings against him. So, it's a little, uh, hopefully he has some different, you know, tricks up his sleeve. And it's also interesting to go from a very cover two heavy defense from Matt Eberflus to very cover three heavy with Gus Bradley. Interesting to see how that transition plays out. But you had a Stephon Gilmore, uh, losing Kari Wills all, also hurts, but you still have Julian Blackman. Shaquille Leonard is a turnover making machine. Bobby O'Karake is a very solid compliment there at the linebacker position. DeForest Buckner is one of the best interior defensive line players. I think Quiddy Pay is going to continue his, you know, uh, his upward swing as a player. Um, and this is just a solid defense and it has been for a while. And, you know, again, solid feels like the exact way I would describe this defense. Could be some regression with, you know, the Willis retirement, Eberflus being gone. But for right now, I think there's enough superstar talent and, and, and enough balance across the, the defensive line, linebacking group, and secondary to make it a pretty good unit. Jacksonville Jaguars. This one was actually one that kind of took me a while to, to figure out. And, you know, where do I put the Jags? I'm going to put them in mid, which I know it sounds wild, but then I was going to our lads and I'm looking at their depth chart. I'm like, all right, well, you know, Trayvon Walker opposite of you know, Josh Allen. That, that sounds pretty good on paper. And got some good linebackers. Chad Moon was a later pick. Devin Lloyd's a first rounder. They pay $15 million a year to say a Luicun and you know there's some flawed thinking that's a lot of linebackers in a day and age where linebackers aren't always on the field uh, or at least not as much as they once were so how does that all play out um, but that being said that with the secondary you added Darius Williams uh, another year with Shaquille Griffin another year with Tyson Campbell young player who you know you've seen Eric Stokes have some success in Green Bay Tyson Campbell very similar skill set obviously played with one another at Georgia so there's hope there. Uh, Andre Sisco, very rangy uh, guy coming out of Syracuse. And I think you'd see a whole lot of him last year. Want to see what he looks like now. And especially now playing with the coach who knows who he is. Uh, you know, Rayshon Jenkins makes too much money. He's not that good. But this is a, this is actually kind of a, a mid-defense, like textbook. That's why they're in the mid-tier. But uh, it's not, not as bad as you might think. So go to our lads and give me your thoughts. I, I think this defense really isn't as bad as we might perceive considering where I see that entire roster and, you know, the team we saw play last year. The Kansas City Chiefs, you know, I'm sticking to the mid-tier. I'm going to have them just ahead of the Lions, but behind the Panthers. You know, George Karloftis, like that ad at the end of the first round. Uh, you know, bringing in a Carlos Dunlap, uh, maybe sees the field more than, you know, Frank Clark. And Chris Jones, when he's an interior pass rusher, is a stud. I like those linebackers, Willie Gay Jr., Nick Bolton, I think they continue to get better. You add a Leo Chanel, someone who can blitz, especially Spags in that defense, how he wants to run it. I know he was smiling. He was probably jumping up and down when they made that selection. Another first round pick goes to Trent McDuffie. I mean, the secondary is kind of what holds me back, specifically the corners. Now Spags has been able to work his magic, and he's made Rashad Fenton into a guy who grades pretty well uh, in the Pro Football Focus system. And it just kind of he Rashad Fenton fits what you know Spags needs out of him. So McDuffie's a little smaller, not necessarily the best man press guy. So is he taking over that Tyron Matthew role, that Rover? I, I need to see it first, but. I like McDuffie and I like Carl Loftus as first round picks. Uh, and, you know, despite my concerns about corner, it hasn't been the biggest part of that defense. And then, you know, Juan Thornhill's still there. Um, Justin Reed comes in. I really want to know who does play that. You know, who's Dan Sorensen now? And then who's Tyron Matthew now? Uh, so I could see McDuffie being, you know, the Tyron Matthew. Does that make Justin Reed the guy who could be the dimebacker? You know, we'll have, again, we'll have to wait and see. But 
some questions I need to answer, but this could definitely be one that shoots up uh, if it all falls into the right place. Uh, the Chargers and then the LA Rams. So the LA teams, I'm gonna actually have them uh, both going into this solid tier. I'll put the Chargers just behind uh, the Denver Broncos. You bring in a JC Jackson, playmaker, year two of Asante Samuel Jr. Loving that. Derwin James, maybe the most talented safety in all the in the entire league. Uh, Drew Tranquil could be a breakout candidate at linebacker, especially if you know that the 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 front of the defense can keep him clean, right? So that's Sebastian Joseph Day, that's Austin Jackson. Those guys need to be, or Austin Johnson, excuse me, need to be better, uh, an improvement for this team against the run. And Khalil Mack, one of the best, you know, on top of what he does as a pass rusher, of course, one of the best edges against the run. So it feels like this team slowly but surely with a few different players took the necessary actions uh, to get better against the run. And hopefully that keeps Drew Tranquil, you know, clean and that hopefully forces teams to, instead of running seven yards a carry, they'll have to throw it. And that's where JC Jackson, Asante Samuel, and, you know, even a Michael Davis, those playmakers can do just that, make plays. So love a lot of what this defense has in theory, plus Brandon Staley, you know, once defense coordinator for the number one ranked defense in the league, yeah, seems like a guy who knows what he's doing. So Chargers certainly fit in that solid tier and could be taking a step forward into the elite tier. Let me get to the LA Rams. I'm going to go ahead and put them as the top team in solid. Them and the Bengals are a little juxtaposed where I think the Bengals are so well-rounded, but maybe don't have outside of Jesse Bates, like a true superstar. You could put Hendrickson maybe into that category, back-to-back -back great years, but the Rams are just like the opposite. Like I worry about that number two corner position and, you know, who's that other edge rupture opposite of, uh, you know, Leonard Floyd, but... Superstar linebacker Bobby Wagner. Maybe not the same guy he once was, but still one of the best inside linebackers in football. Jalen Ramsey, the most talented corner in the league, in my opinion. And Aaron Donald, the best defensive player in the league, in my opinion. So they have like a freak at all three levels. And then, you know, Greg Gaines coming off a career year at that nose tackle spot, specifically as a pass rusher. Um, and, you know, Taylor Rapp, I'm a big fan of him. And, you know, Nick Scott could be a breakout candidate at another safety spot. So pieces to work with. Raheem Morris back to the defensive coordinator. So a lot to like there, but this is the stars and scrubs approach versus the very balanced defense with Cincinnati. So it kind of comes down to your taste and your preference there. Then we get to the Raiders and I'm going to have them just behind the Jags, which, you know, again, that's, you know, it's kind of, oh, they got the Raiders behind the Jags. Taking that out of context sounds bad, but you know, Chandler Jones, Max Crosby, that's an awesome duo, but can the Jones get a little older? How does Max Crosby, you know, what does that production look like against a better slate of tackles? You did have a lot of advantageous matchups, which I'd be surprised if Patrick Graham's not trying to do the same thing this year. You know, that would be, you know, an error in his job. You know, Jonathan Hankins going to have to be, you know, better. Uh, and he's going to have to step up in that nose tackle spot. This team has been looking for a guy to plug the middle and stop the run for a while. Kind of like we've talked about with a few teams here. But that point aside, um, like the edge, uh, I'm really fascinated to see what Divine Diablo, you know, safety turned linebacker coming from Virginia Tech. I hope he starts. And I just want to see him on the field all the time. I need all the data points to see how that works. Uh, Denzel Perriman has had his ups and downs. The secondary is what kind of concerns me. Uh, you know, Trayvon Merrick, I liked him a lot coming out of TCU. Nate Hobbs coming off an awesome season, but he's a nickel corner. So, Rocky Austin, Trayvon Mullen. You know, what do those two guys do on the outside? Can they have a career year? Can they take a step forward working with Patrick Graham? If they do, this team could certainly certainly shoot up the mid tier and maybe even the solid tier, but for right now, I'm a little skeptical about that secondary. Even some question marks about the pass rush and some of the the, the talent they have there, and some concerns, especially with Chandler Jones and maybe some potential injuries he might fight this year. So I got to put him in the mid tier, and like I said, just behind the Jags, which is not something I would have envisioned saying earlier today. Um, I'm going to do one quick edit. I'm going to move the Ravens up and ahead of the Cleveland Browns. And then while we're up here in the elite tier, my shocks people, I'm going to put the Dolphins up there, man. You know, uh, Raekwon Davis and Christian Wilkins, Emmanuel Agba in a 3-4 defense. Those being the three guys on the defensive line. Love that. Melvin Ingram continues to be a solid player. They don't need to continue to do that and be healthy. And on the other side, I'm really hoping Jalen Phillips takes that step forward. So it's a little bit of projection here. Love the interior three. Need those two edges to step up and be on the field consistently. Jerome Baker, you know, really good athlete. Brings some, you know, excitement and highlight level plays to the field. And then that's secondary. I mean, Javon Holland was awesome. And I was one of those guys, few and far between, who was arguing, man, you know, Javon Merrick may be safety one, but I don't think it's as far apart between him and Holland as a lot of people want to make it out to be. He was great last year. And of course, 
It's Xavier Howard. It's Byron Jones. That corner duo is disgusting. And Justin Coleman's a solid nickel corner. So I love that secondary. And I'm a little biased towards that. That's, you know, you have that good of a secondary. You're going to be pretty high in my ranking. So I want to put them in the elites here, despite I know they need to get a little bit better on the edge. I'm having a little bit of projection there specifically with Jalen Phillips, who I loved coming out of UCLA. And then for the Minnesota Vikings, I'm going to have them towards the back of this mid-tier. Them and the Raiders could be close. I just worry about Zadarius Smith and Daniel Hunter. Can those guys stay healthy? If they do, awesome. And then you're talking about, you know, Harrison Phillips, Dalvin Tomlinson, a couple of nice, you know, run-stopping bigs there in the middle. Uh, you know, Eric Kendricks, if he's healthy, one of the best linebackers in football. Um, you know, Anthony Barr no longer there, though, so we'll have to wait and see. Maybe we see some more Chas Rat this upcoming year. Uh, and the secondary is also a big concern. You know, Harrison Smith's fantastic. Lewis Seen's getting a, ton, a bunch of praise in camp. And, you know, even Cameron Bynum going into year two. I think, you know, had some good moments last year. You know, is Andrew Booth someone who can stick and hold his own as a rookie? Remains to be seen. Patrick Peterson, how much gas is left in the tank? Cam Dantzler, new coaching staff. Does he have their support or is he kind of right back in the doghouse like he was with Mike Zimmer? Because he's had some good games. He's had some good moments and he's graded well. But at the same time, you're not on the field. Why is that? That's, that's always a concerning note. So things that I like, worried about injuries and really concerned about how that secondary all comes together, specifically the cornerbacks. So the Vikings go into the mid-tier. And then the New England Patriots. And I'm going to upset some Pats fans here. And I never thought I'd say this about a Bill Belichick defense. I think this is a below average unit. Uh, I'll still put them ahead of the Bears. But, you know, let's work, you know, let's work from the defensive line back to the secondary. Matt Judon and Christian Barmore. Two pieces I like. Judon had more sacks than maybe, you know, his pathways for win rate would, you know, suggest. I think Barmore is in. You know, he was one of my breakout candidates. If you missed the video, definitely go back and check it out. But I, I'm, I'm in on Christian Barmore, but... Who else really across the defensive line stands out as a difference maker? Not a whole lot. And then, you know, Jawan Bentley, you know, Mac Wilson. Going to need some names that haven't been great in their career to be better than expected there at the linebacker position. And then the secondary. I mean, you know, Jonathan Jones, I guess, is still there in the nickel. But Marcus Jones may be a guy who takes that spot. Third rounder out of Houston. Is Malcolm Butler a guy you could trust to start? Terrence Mitchell, who's had a long journeyman career. I, I just, even the safety position, you know, Devin McCourty's retired. So I look at Adrian Phillips and Kyle Duggar. Those feel like strong safeties. Jabril, uh, Jabril Cox, excuse me, Jabril Peppers also kind of feels like a strong safety. And that was part of why he didn't really stick with the Giants is, you know, they kept trying to force him into coverage. He's not great as a deep safety. So I see three strong safeties. And I'm kind of missing who that free is going to be with the retirement of McCourty. So... Lots of concern in the secondary pass rush linebacker position. The biggest plus I could say about it is, you know, Bill Belichick's there. And, uh, you know, Steve Belichick's there. And, you know, Matt Patricia, who's had success working with that defense in New England. Not a great head coach, but had some good years as a DC in New England. So I, I hope I'm proven wrong. But, man, the talent is few and far between for the Pats. Next up, the New Orleans Saints. I think this is an elite defense, man. You, you see, I'm going to put them just... Ah, I'll move them ahead of the Dolphins just because I, I can trust a little bit more what's there. Um, but I do I do like Miami's defense and what it could be. But Dennis Allen, now the head coach. He's still going to be calling plays defensively. Cam Jordan, Mark Stavenport. Love that pass rush duo with uh, David Onyemata there in the middle. Really nice player. Uh, seen a lot of hype for Pete Warner as the other off-ball linebacker next to Demario Davis, which does a ton because Demario Davis, he, he continues to be, you know, maybe the best off-ball linebacker in football, which is just bonkers to say considering he gets older and older and he's on the wrong side of 30. You're, you're like waiting for him to fall off, but he keeps being one of the best. Uh, but if injuries or that fall-off does come, it's really nice to hear Pete Warner is, is getting some love and some hype and maybe can step into a bigger role. Uh, and then I think Paulson Adebo in year two, you know, I was kind of skeptical about him being a starter last year, but had some flashes and all in all, kind of like Eric Stokes, where there's some bad there, sure, but you also see the skills, and it's like, that guy feels like he can stick in the NFL, and it helps Marshawn Lattimore, a CB1, that's awesome. You bring in a Marcus May and a Tyron Matthew, and, you know, what an island of misfit toys, right? Like, Marcus May was a free agent for a while, and Tyron Matthew just couldn't find the deal that made sense. He goes back home, obviously, former LSU Tiger, and you also have Chauncey Gardner-Johnson, who is unbelievable as a strong safety, nickel corner, and trash talker, so... I'm all in on New Orleans, so definitely going to put them in the elite tier here. And then for the Giants, I'm going to put them just ahead of the Jaguars in the mid-tier. I actually like a lot of the talent here. Kayvon Thibodeau, opposite of Zizo Jalari, signed me off that pass rush duo. I uh, still have Leonard Williams there in the middle uh, and Dexter Lawrence. 
I like that on paper. That that's a really awesome front four. And you know, the linebacker position is not great. Blake Martinez has you know had a couple of you know good years. What does that look like for Wink Martindale? Who I'm also a big uh, believer in Wink Martindale, but I'm not entirely sure this defense has all the pieces he'll need. I'll kind of come back to that when we get to the secondary. And you know, Tate Crowder, more data points there. I want to see him play a little bit more. See if he can actually stick in the NFL. Had some good games last year though. And then the secondary. Big Xavier McKinney fan. I like Julian Love. Feels like a nice duo there. Uh, but losing Logan Ryan kind of puts you in a spot where there's not a whole lot of depth there. Darnay Holmes could be a nice nickel, but it's the outside corners that make me a little concerned, right? Is, uh, is uh, not Patrick Robinson. That's not the name. Uh, Aaron Robinson from UCF. I, I kind of thought of him as a nickel because his hand or his feet and his hips, eh, a little slow, but we'll find out. Wink Martindale needs good cornerback play. So with Dory Jackson, if he's healthy, that's a solid place to start, but... It's really that other corner spot that makes me a little concerned. I'd feel a whole lot better if, if it was, you know, James Bradbury and Adoree Jackson is the two versus Adoree Jackson is the one and, and Robinson is the two. But time will tell that story. I like Wink Martindale and I love that front four. I can't wait to see the pressure that he brings. And he's just going to need stable secondary play, which if, if the Giants find it, this team could be sneaky and, and propel up this list. For the New York Jets, I'm actually going to put him just ahead of the Lions. So... Again, you're going to need some things to fall the right way. And I'm going to need Quinn and Williams to take that step forward. We've been saying it for what, three years now. Oh, he's a breakout candidate. Oh, this is the year. He's going to put it all together. Okay, please do it now. Um, but, you know, Carl Lawson coming back from injury. Added Jermaine Johnson to the back of the first round. Feels like that. And John Franklin Myers obviously got an extension this offseason. Feels like that that uh, that defensive line is slowly but surely kind of coming together. Um Linebacker position, C.J. Mosley's, you know, obviously once the guy who made a ton of money because he was a good player in Baltimore. How does he fit with Robert Sala? Uh, we'll have to see. Uh, I still need to, this, I need to, I need more sample there. Um, and then you get to the secondary, and man, their investment in corner is a big reason why I put them in this mid-tier. You know, Sauce Gardner at pick four, love that. Uh, you know, $10 million a year for D.J. Reed. I think that's a really good add, and that allows you to use Michael Carter the second or, or Bryce Hall in the nickel versus that being your one and two. So that just it changes your com complete complexion on that cornerback room. And, you know, LaMarcus Joyner, Ashton Davis, you know, they could get better. Jordan Whitehead, I think, is actually a pretty good safety. But those, those first two listed, you know, you could get better there. But they're solid. They're capable. Specifically, uh, LaMarcus Joyner, he's had a long NFL career for a reason. So solid unit. I like Robert Sala, of course, as a defensive mind. Um, need Quinn and Williams to take that step forward. And if C.J. Mosley, in specific, can somehow turn back the clock and kind of be that Fred Warner-ish, Fred warner light for Salah, this defense could be pretty good. Uh, and then we get to the Philadelphia Eagles. And I'm going to put the Eagles just behind the Bengals, a little out of the Broncos. They're, they're kind of similar to those two teams where I like it really at all three levels. Uh, but man, depth across the defensive line for Philadelphia because you have Hassan Reddick, you have Derek Barnett, you have Josh Sweat, you have Jordan Davis, you have Javon Hargrave, you have Fletcher Con like. Rotation on top of rotation, both on the interior and on the edge, which huge plus to have there. Uh, TJ Edwards has been solid. Then you add a nice athlete with N'Kobe Dean. Really, really excited to see that tandem. Um, and then you get in the secondary. You get James Bradbury for pennies on the dollar. Pair him up with Darius Slay. Some question marks at, at safety, but Marcus Evans, Kwan Williams, uh, Anthony Harris, Jaquiski Tart. They got four guys who have been starters and, you know, if something, you know, just fight it out in camp, battle it out, you know, let the best man win. And then also Jonathan Gannon, some of the stuff that he's been saying, you know, year two, this defense is going to take a step forward. Last year was a lot of soft zone. Keep the ball in front of you, limit big plays. What does that step forward look like this year for, for uh, Jonathan Gannon and this defense entirely? But tons of talent at all three levels, depth to go with it across the defensive line. And I'm excited to see what Jonathan Gannon brings to the table. So certainly a solid defense. And sticking in this tier, I'm going to put Pittsburgh... Just ahead of the Bengals. I don't know if I think Pittsburgh's defense in totality is better than the Bengals, but Pittsburgh kind of falls more in line with where I see the Rams, and that's where I put them side by side, where it's like TJ Watt, Cam Hayward, even Larry Ogunjobi. If that's your if that's your band-aid to fill the hole of a retiring Stephon to it, that's pretty good. You know, Tyson Alu Alu is going to have to step up with his nose, help against the run. Been saying this for a handful of teams now, but that's certainly the case in Pittsburgh, and that kind of leads us into the linebacking group where one Brian Flores as a linebacker coach, that feels like a, an awesome hire and kind of striking while the opportunity was there. Go get a guy to have Devin Bush hit his potential. And we've seen Miles Jack become, or be one of the best linebackers in football. Can Brian Flores get him back to that? And if so, and Tyson Alu-Alu, it's slightly better against the run. 
the interior in the middle of that defense looks so much better. Uh, but the team would also need Alex Highsmith to get better on the edge spot opposite of TJ Watt. But it's really those superstars that's like, wow, yeah, this team could totally lead the league in pressures and sacks once again. So the secondary is a little concerning outside of Mika Fitzpatrick. He even got, you know, Terrell Edmonds, you know, taking away the Steelers stuff on his jersey on his Twitter, you know, AVI. So that's a little concerning. Uh, and in the secondary, it feels like a bunch of, you know, corner threes, you know, like I like Cam Sutton. I like Akella Witherspoon. And um, there's something to appreciate about all those guys. And Levi Wallace has been a, been a guy I've supported. But they, again, all kind of feel like low CB2s to CB3 range guys. And that's, that's the starting trio. So a little skeptical there. Um, and that's really what holds it back. Totally could be an elite defense of those guys patched together. I think the, the bright side of your Steelers fan is Terrell Austin's now the DC. He used to be the DB's coach. So working with those guys and maybe understanding their limitations or maybe getting more of those guys. One way or another, I'm hoping that leads to those guys not being exposed, <laughs> whether it's because they get better working with Terrell Austin or he knows how to hide them and uh, really take advantage of the talent they have in the front seven when it, gets to the, when it comes to rushing the passer. Seattle Seahawks will be my last team to go in the bad tier. I'll put them just behind the Falcons. I think they're... I think they're missing a few potential superstars where like, you know, I like AJ Terrell, uh, you know, I like Grady Jared, of course, Deion Jones is a good football player, but for Seattle, man, it's like, I like Daryl Taylor, Puna Ford could be interesting, Al Woods, okay, uh, the linebacker spot, like, hopefully Jordan Brooks takes a step forward, uh, you know, former first round pick, only rooting for him there, the secondary, outside of the safety is, of course, Quandre Diggs, Jamal Adams, a lot of talent there, but Cindy Jones is starting. Yeah, I'm just really not thrilled about that corner acquisition as a whole. And then on top of that, iffy about the linebacking group. And there's no edge or pass rusher on that front that you look at and like, yeah, that guy could become a 10 sack guy. Outside of Daryl Taylor, I'm kind of skeptical. And Otena Nwosu is a solid ad, but he's kind of a, a combo versatile, you know, coverage and pass rush guy, not one or the other as a, a pure go-to strength. I'm not even entirely sure there's a guy I look at and I'm like, yeah, I can count on that guy getting eight sacks. Like there probably will be just because, you know, sacks got to go around, numbers got to fill up, but there's nobody I look at and I'm like, yeah, I can count on it. I know that dude can do it. So lots of question marks and I'm really skeptical of Seattle. Them and Houston, you could flip them as well for that, uh, you know, very bottom spot in the bad ranking. Then for the San Francisco 49ers, I'm going to put them just ahead of the Indianapolis Colts. Um, you know, Nick Bosa is a freak. Eric Armstead's really, really good. Fred Warner is the best off-ball linebacker in the league, in my opinion. Um, they're going to need Drake Jackson to be an impact player pretty much right away. That or uh, Samson Ibukam uh, as another edge rusher. Um, and Javon Kinlaw. I mean, you know, in a draft where the, the Vikings traded Stephon Diggs and got Justin Jefferson is also the same year, if memory serves, that the 49ers traded uh, DeForest Buckner and then tried to roll the dice and try to get his replacement, Javon Kinlaw. And like, I liked it in theory, but hasn't totally worked out. But you know, that being said, like Kinlaw's only played like 800 snaps in his career. Hasn't seen the field a whole, whole lot for the first two years. And also he said right when he got to the 49ers camp, like, man, they just did not teach this stuff at South Carolina. So you hear some of that and, and, and how little of the field he sees. Maybe he just didn't have enough pass rush, you know, skills and, you know, didn't have the technique totally refined to be productive at the NFL level. And the coaches were trying to, protect him maybe and you know continue to work with him i'm hoping that's the case and now you're starting to hear some hype that you know maybe year three he'll break out let's hope that if he does that definitely makes the 49ers defense a lot more formidable we already talked about fred warner drake greenlaw is also a good player Traverius ward a uh, solid ad you know 15 ish million dollars a year if memory serves and eh, a little little rich for my blood but solid player jason brett every year we're saying this he's good but you know can he stay healthy emmanuel mosley is proven to be a nice ad um a little concerned about the safety spots, but D'Amico Ryan's, you know, it's really kind of been a continuation of that Robert Sala scheme, and I expect them to be able to keep the secondary mostly clean. Also, like Ambry Thomas, had some good games last year as a rookie coming out of Stanford, so I think he can only get better in year two. So, solid defense for sure. Then the Tampa Bay Bucks, and uh, yeah, them or Baltimore probably is that number two defense, in my opinion. Uh, man, you know, Sean Murphy Bunting, Carlton Davis, Jamel Dean, love those corners, and then. Logan Ryan, Antoine Winfield Jr., uh, great safety depth, uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm forgetting a couple names off the top of my head, but also Levante David and, and, and Devin White, really nice pairing there in the middle, and it'll really take Shaquille Barrett being consistent, being a legitimate force week in, week out, and then Joe Tryon, Shoyinka, uh, 
being better than he was last year. You kind of saw some moments week one and two last year. And if he could take that and just like extract that out over 17 games, then yeah, he'll be pretty good. And that'll make Shaq Barrett that much better. And then that edge, you know, duo will be really formidable. But also adding Akeem Hicks, who I think you can count as more reliable and consistent pass rusher than Dominican Sue. I think that's a good add. You still have William Golston. You still have Vita Bay, who's a freak in the middle. Unbelievable against the run, but also just like two or three times a week, he'll just put a center on a QB's lap, and I love watching that. So, picks his moments right. Uh, but yeah, there's a ton of talent left, right, and center. And Todd Bowles, the DC. Yeah, that's a, that's an elite defense in my book. And then for the Tennessee Titans, and like I like Mike Vrabel. I'm going to put him right next to the Panthers. They kind of feel like similar in a lot of ways, where like I like the defensive mind at the center and the kind of the core of this. Mike Vrabel, obviously, you know, a good guy to have coaching up that defense as the head coach. Uh, you know, Kevin Byard. One of the best deep safeties and coverage safeties in the league. Uh, Amani Hooker, um, Elijah Molden in the nickel, like those pieces. Caleb Farley, if he can stay healthy, has a ton of talent to work with. Christian Fulton looked really good last year. So the secondary is really what I like. A um, little concerned about the line, inside linebacking spot. You know, David Long Jr., Zach Cunningham. Long Jr. could be better than I expect, but all in all, that's still a duo that. Uh, Remains uh, remains to be seen. I'm not entirely sold on it yet. Uh, Danico Autry, solid. Bud Dupree, feels like he makes more money than production you get out of him. Harold Landry, kind of the similar thing. So I'm a little skeptical about the pass rush, but that being said, it's a really good secondary and that makes the lives of Dupree and Landry that much better and that much easier. And this was also a defense kind of like the Cardinals last year that I didn't love everything on paper, but they definitely played better than what I was expecting. So could totally do the same thing this upcoming year. And last but not least, the Washington Commanders. Oh, but um, right behind the Bengals, uh, maybe behind the Eagles. They fit really pretty well. I could I, I could be moved either behind the Eagles all the way up to this top spot. For right now, I'll kind of put them right behind the Steelers and ahead of the Bengals. That one totally could be moved, like I said. But, man, if healthy, you know, like obviously Chase Young's been missing time. Hopefully it's just like week one. But him, Monta Sweat, Jonathan Allen, Deron Payne, that is an unbelievably good front four. Uh, you're going to need Jamie Davis to be better this year. But him and Cole Holcomb, there's some talent and some pieces to be worked with. Holcomb's kind of already a little bit better of a pro. But Davis, I think if he hits his potential, could really be, you know, it could definitely be better than Holcomb. But I think that could be a really nice duo and a young, cheap duo at that. Uh, and then, you know, Cam Curl, Bobby McCain. I like Curl. Bobby McCain is your free safety. Eh. There's a little bit of desire there, but the corners with, you know, Kendall Fuller, Benjamin St. Juice going into year two, William Jackson, the second second year of his deal. Hopefully he gets better. There's a lot of talent there in the secondary to work with. Last year, it didn't come all together, and I'm hoping Jack Del Rio does get that to happen this year. If not, he's going to be out of a job, in my opinion. I cannot see where, if he disappoints as a DC two years in a row with that much talent, then he's, he's got to be canned. Uh, and then on top of some of the other stuff, you know, that leaves his mouth <laughs> away from the field. Um, Phrasing is important in life, but lots of talent to work with. And that front four can be gross. So I think I'll maybe put it behind the Eagles because the question marks at linebacker, not entirely sold in the secondary despite its talent. But man, if it all comes together, this could legitimately, like my last year's defensive ranking, I had as the number one defense. I think that potential is still there for this team. They just need it all to come together. So Easier said than done for sure, but that is going to do it for my ranking of all 32 defenses in the NFL. Tell me what you think down below in the comments section. It's very subjective. I know my list is not the right list. I'd love to see yours. Who would you move up? Who would you move down? Give me your thoughts, and I respond to just about every comment, so let's talk about these defenses down below. Hopefully, you all enjoyed today's video. If you did, be sure to hit that like button. It would help me out a ton, and if you're new around here, you want to see more football content in your life, just hit that big red subscribe button. That's going to do it for me. Hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day, and until next time, my name is Tej, and I'm signing off.